Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today we're talking about wet bulb temperature and wet bulb potential temperature. Oh, hi team. I am so glad to be back. I missed you guys. I missed doing these videos. So I'm excited to be here. I hope you're excited to be here too. And what we're talking about today with wet bulb temperature and wet bulb potential temperature, these are sort of the last two terms that we needed to learn before we could jump into something I'm really excited about, which is skew T diagrams. Um, I'm filming this. It is now the middle of April here in Oklahoma, which is um, we, are, we are into storm season. We're into our severe weather time of year. We get a lot of thunderstorms and yes, tornadoes out here where I live. And what we're going to learn with those skew T's is going to help us understand severe weather better. And I'm really excited for it. But before we can do that, we need to talk about wet bulb temperature. Wet bulb temperature is the temperature an air parcel has once we cool it down by evaporating um, water vapor into it. So let me explain. This circle is our air parcel for all intents and purposes. And I've drawn um, a, a super physically realistic small pool of water here at the bottom. In reality, we're talking about little bits of liquid water that are suspended in the air as opposed to water vapor. Um, but for visual purposes, imagining a small pool of water is actually going to be a little bit more helpful. So remember that when I take liquid water and I go from a liquid state to a gaseous state, I'm going from a less energetic state of matter to a more energetic state of matter. So to do this, I had to add heat here. Well, where did I get that heat from? Exactly. I had to pull heat out of the air parcel into the liquid water in order for that liquid water to change phase. So when I'm pulling heat out of the air, the temperature of the air is going to go down. So if I do this, I evaporate water into my air parcel until the point of saturation. The temperature I, I get down to is my wet bulb temperature. I'm not going to write like an equation for this. This is typically something you're just going to look up, but it is an important concept. Actually, how you would physically measure this is pretty cool. There's an instrument and it's kind of like, um, can you imagine that like New Year's Eve party thing where you spin it and it makes noise? Okay, so imagine that, but what you've got is like a thermometer on it. And then at the far end, we have a piece of cloth that you've soaked in water. And then you're gonna spin the thing around. And when you spin it around, you're gonna force some of the water from the piece of cloth to evaporate um, into the air. And you have to spin it, I think for a full minute, it might depend on which instrument. And then you read the temperature measurement and that's your wet bulb temperature. Um, and I don't know why I find that mental image just delightful, but I do. Okay, so this is all well and good, but why in the world is this something we want to think about? Why is this an important term? Well, one application, one place where it's a, an important way to kind of think about how the atmosphere behaves is for uh, human beings like you and me. So this is Timmy. Timmy's come back to visit. And when it is hot outside, Timmy is going to sweat a little, right? So he's gonna get um, some perspiration on his body. So we sweat a liquid and then that liquid evaporates and it's that evaporative cooling that cools us down. So we sweat so that evaporative cooling will cool us down and keep us from getting like heat stroke. And you know, keeps Timmy here very, 
very happy. So you can use wet bulb temperature as a way to say, um, this is the maximum safe temperature for humans to say, be outside doing an activity um, or something like that. So it's important if you're, th if you're in an environment where you're gonna think about heat injury and heat exhaustion. This can be a really useful tool for sort of how you're gonna set what the limits are for what people can do to stay safe. So that's wet bulb temperature. Now let's talk about wet bulb potential temperature. And I'm gonna keep my script on me because the definition here gets very specific and I don't wanna mess it up. So wet bulb potential temperature is the temperature of a parcel that is first cooled adiabatically to saturation and then brought to 1000 hectopascals by a moist adiabatic process. So that's the definition, that's what it is. This is something, this is actually a term we're going to use, I think, two videos from now on the skew-t diagram. But like I said at the beginning, I wanna introduce you guys to this concept first. Fundamentally, what wet bulb potential temperature gets us is sort of an abstract variable, but it gets us a term that is constant with moist adiabatic processes. If you guys remember way back to when we learned in this video series about potential temperature, potential temperature we defined to be a constant for dry adiabatic processes. So you can think of wet bulb potential temperature as the equivalent to potential temperature, but for moist adiabatic processes. So potential temperature is constant for dry adiabatic processes. Wet bulb potential temperature is constant for moist adiabatic processes. And it turns out that having a term that is constant for moist adiabatic processes can be pretty darn useful. Again, we'll see that when we apply this constant here in a video or two. Okay, team, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you liked this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye team. A very loud car is going by. That owner is very cool. Um, okay.